tell you a little bit about that. First, Lady Sachs, I want to say I really appreciate you because you've held your own against them. Yeah. I didn't hear them at all. Right? Yeah. Are you a doormat, a door prize, or a doorbell? What do you think about that? Do those concepts make any sense to you? I was on the phone with a friend of mine some years back. We were having a conversation, and we started talking about the mindsets that women sometimes have in relationships. And men don't think it doesn't relate to you because the same concepts apply to everyone. But we talked about that woman who doesn't value herself, allows herself to be used, to walk, be walked on by men. She does things trying to buy someone's affection. So we decided that that personality was the doormat. I said, yeah, but there's another woman on the other end of the set spectrum who's the exact opposite of the doormat. She thinks it's all about her. Like where the doormat has the low self-esteem, she thinks a little bit too highly of herself. So she thinks it's all about her. This man should just be lucky to have me. I need this type of man on my arm, that kind of attitude. Anybody ever run across that kind of woman or person? We decided that was the door prize. She thought she's the prize. I said, yeah, but somewhere in the middle, there's a woman that's balanced, that's focused, she's God-focused, she knows who she is, she knows who she is, she appreciates and values herself. She gives because she wants to, and that's who she is, not because she's trying to buy someone's affections. So we decided, that's the doorbell, because she's the bell of the ball. That's the Proverbs 31 woman. That's the woman who fears God, she handles her business, she has multiple streams of income, she speaks and does everything with wisdom, she takes care of her household. She takes care of her staff. But above all, she puts God first. Amen. So that's who the doorbell is. And when, at the end of that conversation, well, during that conversation, I realized that's a book. <laughs> so it ended up becoming a book called Crossing the Threshold, Opening Your Door to Successful Relationships. The whole premise of the book is that we have to value ourselves first before we try to attach ourselves to someone else. Valentine's Day and most days, everyone is thinking about being in a relationship. There's a chapter called Deer Hunting, D-E-A-R Hunting. Everybody thinks things should come in twos, spaghetti and meatballs. Shoes are always twos, gloves are two. We think if we're not part of a couple, there's something wrong with us. But two halves don't make a whole. Two whole people make a whole. And you know how we all have that focus where we're looking at other people and thinking, well, you know, what am I going to get? What do you bring to the table? We have these lists of what we're looking for. Anybody ever made a list? Yeah, I decided to write a list once. I thought I'd put down a few things. I could share a little bit of that with you. I decided to make my list of what I was looking for. Well, you get that. But a lot of times, we have so many things on that list of requirements that we have, we don't bother to look at ourselves and say, what are we bringing to the table? Do I have all of those things? that I'm requiring somebody else have on their list. So we gotta look at us first. We gotta look at some of the behaviors that we bring from relationship to relationship. Are we bad ladies or bad men? Uh, are we what we're seeking? Are we suffering from the Cinderella syndrome, waiting to be rescued by Prince Charming? Or are we rescuing ourselves? If we want a house, are we buying it ourselves? If we want a vacation, are we gonna take it for ourselves? Are we settling for Mr. In the Meantime? Trying to fit that round peg in the square hole and it doesn't fit so we kind of shave the edges off and try to shove it down in there anyway? I think we've all been there. Instead of waiting for the one that God really has for us. These are just some of the concepts that we have to think about. We have to recognize what our own baggage is, what we're bringing to the table, and not settle for those. There's a, well, I won't talk about that example. But I'll talk about an example I do at a workshop sometimes where I pass around some candy through the audience. Everybody help yourself take a piece of candy. They open it, start eating it, and then I go back and collect it halfway through and tell them to put it back in the thing, in the little container. And then I go back and ask people if anybody wants any. And surprisingly enough, nobody ever wants any. I don't know why that is, but people will do that with other people. You'll date someone that you know belongs to someone else instead of waiting for the person that God has for you. So I just want